You guys will be so proud of me. I finally figured out iced coffee. I know I'm like a decade behind, but I did it. I'll tell you all about it. But then we're going to dig in and actually talk about something for serious here. We're gonna talk about the fact that we, after over a decade of homeschooling, are graduating our first child this week. So coming out with me today, friends, iced coffee, graduating children, homeschooling through high school, we're gonna cover it today. wonderful week. I'm so excited to sit down and chit chat with you all today. You know we have videos that come out each and every day along with our biblical womanhood study that is currently going on. I'm loving it. Every year we do this, well for the past five years anyways, and it is the best time ever. So if you haven't signed up already, be sure to check those links down in the description so you can come and sign up and join us for this study. But first, let me tell you guys about my amazing feet. I shared with you guys Javi Coffee um, like a week ago. It's really, really cool. It's this coffee concentrate that comes just in this simple little bottle. It's a month's worth of coffee in this one bottle. And you can make it hot or cold. You can bake with it. You can do smoothies. You can do whatever you want to do with it. And so um, I got it and I was making lattes with it because I always do hot. And I get that this is a total like first world problem. Like I get it doesn't matter. but. We're friends here, we're talking. We talked about how I had never tried iced coffee because for some reason it just seemed like intimidating to me. I don't know why. I feel like it was the same thing as the Instant Pot. When I first got my Instant Pot, I like stared at it for like a year. It just sat on a shelf in my kitchen because I was like intimidated to use it. And when I finally did, I was like, <gasps> And now I use it all the time and like I don't even cook with anything else if I'm cooking inside it's because it's in the Instapot. I felt like it was the same way with iced coffee. I was just really intimidated by it and I have no idea why. I understand that this sounds crazy. It makes no sense. But you guys helped me out here. We chatted about it and then a few days ago I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to film it. I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to make iced coffee with my Javi coffee. It's amazing. Where, like I know I'm a decade behind. Where has this been all my life? It's wonderful. I did it and it's amazing. I did pick up this cup for a dollar at the thrift store when I was out with Virginia the other day because I have really pretty teacups that I drink my coffee out of, but I wanted something pretty to enjoy my iced coffee out of. And so um, I've just been doing a teaspoon of the Javi Coffee Concentrate. I just love it because it makes it so easy. I don't have to mess with anything. It's just in the fridge. I put a teaspoon of Javi coffee, just the original coffee in there. I put a teaspoon, I did uh, uh, just a classic caramel sugar-free syrup. Um, so I put a little bit of flavor in there, a splash of heavy whipping cream, ice and water. I know, again, I'm late here, but it's so good. I love it. So thank you, Javi Coffee, for making this so simple and easy. If you guys want to try out Javi Coffee, it is linked down below. You guys get a special discount when you use my code. They have a Coffee of the Month Club where you literally can sign up and just get like a bottle of coffee every month. It just auto ships to you and it's sugar free. It's ethically grown, you know, all of the great stuff. And it's really simple and affordable. So I'm like, hmm, if I'm gonna switch and do iced coffee, especially over like the hotter months, um, you can make this hot or you can make it cold however you want it. But I'm thinking coffee of the month might be where I am headed because I think that's just so awesome to have it so simple and put together. We've got so much farm stuff going on. If you guys saw yesterday's video, I need ease, I need simplicity. So I think this has been my win. 
I am absolutely loving this. It's delicious. You guys check out my link down below. That's my little thing that I've just been dying to share with you guys because I made my iced coffee and I'm like, you guys are going to be so proud of me. I have to share with my friends. And so I did it. It's amazing. I know I'm late, but it's so great. Try out Javi. Let's talk about graduation. Okay. So that was my my fun thing that I couldn't wait to share with my friends. Let's dive into graduation. So let me first tell you about our son who's graduating. Travis is our oldest. I was 17 when I had him. He is 18, he'll be 19 this fall. He is the most amazing child in the entire world. I, I mean, genuinely, he is such an amazing guy. Um, amazing child, you know, he made his parents and, and everything that we went through with being married so young and figuring out how to do having her own home and having a child and being married and all of the pieces, right? He's just such a trooper through all of that. Um, he went to a government school, public education for kindergarten and half of first grade. And he went to an amazing school. We lived in a wonderful area. He went to one of the best, had amazing teachers. I mean, we were friends with them. They're wonderful. And we saw in just kindergarten and half of first grade, how much damage was being done to him through public education. And it really wasn't something we liked. And that really didn't even come from a religious standpoint as we were professing believers, but not really spiritually mature or really you know, understanding what it meant to walk with the Lord. Um, and we started seeing really big red flags that we didn't want to be a part of. And so um, even his teachers didn't believe in the system and they were like, yeah, I mean, this, this is what it is. And again, we're talking like over a decade ago that we were having these conversations. And so we um, pulled Travis out, started homeschool. We knew nobody that homeschooled. I was totally just winging it because that is my style. And um, he was our guinea pig child, right? That, that's what the first is, I think, so often. They're the ones you're trying to figure it all out with. And um, to see the young man that he has grown up into now is just such a blessing. And I'm so proud of him and so thankful that he is such a forgiving spirit um, as we were trying to figure out a homeschool and all of the pieces and him having to kind of like go through the, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, he did such a great job. And so um, that kind of gets us to the high school years, which I think most people are intimidated by. I remember when we started homeschooling, we had even said, you know, we'll homeschool for now. And then when he gets to like high school age, I'm sure he'll probably go back to real school um, was kind of like this idea we had. And then thankfully the Lord, you know, pursued us and growing in spiritual maturity and biblical literacy and all the other stuff we knew that just there was no reason government school would ever have a place in our home. Um, I just don't believe in it because my responsibility is to train my children up in the ways of the Lord and I cannot send them to a system that will do everything but that. Um, and so we just, you know, made that decision of, you know, know that this is where we will stay. And high school is amazing. I, I know we have this idea of like, oh, teenagers, oh, high school, you know, all of that. Our experience was everything but that. Um, even seeing our, our oldest daughter now, she'll be a teenager this year. Seeing our kids kind of hit that phase, um, I love it. I absolutely love it. Seeing them become young adults and move into their own, um, setting up a high school in a way that it's fostering and, and supporting him in pursuing whatever it is the Lord has called them to pursue. I feel like for us, we really spent the elementary years trying to you know, foster that love of learning, right? If you teach kids to just love learning, it makes it really easy. If you yourself love learning, it makes it really simple. Um, and so using high school then to really be a support to whatever it is that our kids are naturally gifted in or interested in and really just helping them flourish in that um, is a wonderful, wonderful experience. And so high school for him, really, I would say it started off with a bit of frustration because I knew there were things I wanted him to be proficient in, um, but trying to meet what I thought it should be with what he was interested in um, was a bit of a learning curve. Again, I'm thankful for his grace with me through this is 
we were both trying to figure this whole thing out. Um, the girls are going to be the real winners here because I feel like I, I understand so much more now that I'm getting to them. So it started off with a bit of frustration because I really wanted him to be able to do certain things. He really wanted to pursue these things over here and we hadn't quite figured out that balance. Um, but then once we did, it's been phenomenal. Um, the HMH co-op that we offer is, is really thanks to Travis because I was so frustrated and I said, mom, you got to help me out here. She's coming from, you know, a background of teaching for over 20 years and we kind of merged the two together and, and it's what the co-op is now. And I'm so thankful to the co-op, not only for my family, but for families all over the country and even internationally. And that is where Travis found his love of writing. Um, that is where these writing workshops, the kid hated writing. He wouldn't write a sentence. I mean, it was awful. It was part of the frustration part. Started doing these co-op classes. The kid's now writing books. I mean, he's writing this novel series that is phenomenal. It's so good. It genuinely is because he has this love now. And so seeing how high school really these years of, of learning how to, you know, make sure that he had his core, you know, knowledge and understanding there, but then really just helping him flourish in these areas that he's passionate about and seeing what all has come of that has just been an amazing experience. And I'm so proud of him. He's done just great. He's done so, so well. I really cannot sing his praises enough. And so for us, when it came to this year, we, we, we decided collectively that this would be his last year of home education. And um, we take a very unschool approach to it. You guys can go back through these videos and, and look at all the different ones we've done, kind of talking about our approach to education, our kind of philosophy here. And it's something that I definitely look forward to talking to more about. So if you guys ever have questions about any of this, leave me a comment down below. We're happy to cover them. But we really looked at this year saying, okay, this will be his last year of you know home education. What are our requirements? And I, I honestly, we sat down and I said, I'm completely happy with where you're at academically. Academically, you are on point. I know you know your stuff. I, I know you've got it. Whatever it is the Lord puts in your path going forward, you have the smarts, you have the knowledge, right? And anything you don't know, you have the ability to think and process and figure out. And so we had a couple of requirements where we said, okay, I know academ academically you've got this. But if you are going to write books, if you are going to pursue these things and that, like if you are going to do that, you have to know there's kind of that like adulting part of it where how to do business, how to get through life, you know, how to do these things. There, there's a few of that, the things in that area that we said, you know, I, I want to see you pursue that a little bit. I want you to figure out, you know, how to reach out to people, how to share your stuff, how to work, you know, in this type of a team setting to complete the project and things like that. And so that's what he really worked on this year. And I'm so proud of him. We kind of, I helped him out a little bit in the beginning of like, you know, I want to see you do these things. There was a little bit there. And then he's just flown with it the rest of the year. And he's put together his own like little publishing house. He's got people involved in it. He has other writers. He's got editors. He's got, you know, graphic designers. You know, he's got this with this little, his little group. And they have things that they're working on. And these, these young adults, these, you know, they're even children. These young adults are just doing so well. And I'm so proud of them. And so knowing that academically he's exactly where you know we would hope to see him and then seeing him really just flourish in these these more like adult real life you know areas that i wanted to make sure that you know i was confident that he could do it he has far surpassed our expectations and um he's gonna do great so i mean he is he is full like flying colors checked off all of our requirements for what he needs to do to be able to graduate and we're looking great and so for now you know our, our thing we had said when years back in homeschooling our children we said okay we need to set goals we need to say you know as parents as educators what's our goal and the end goal for us for all of our children is that our children truly know the Lord because they know his word and they are walking in his ways. That's our goal for our children. And we trust the Lord with that. We do our part. We give it to God. We've got it. When I look at our son and I go, okay, 
not that he's like rushing out the door or anything, but like as we walk into graduation this weekend, what, you know, what are we doing? This kid knows the Lord and he is seeking to be refined. He's seeking to grow and to be used by the Lord. If you guys missed his podcast a couple weekends ago, you just have to go back and listen to it because I just was so proud of him. It was just a conversation him and I had. I'm so proud of him. But to see him love the Lord, to desire truth, and to be able to go out into the world with a biblical worldview, which means he takes everything he sees before him and puts it through a lens of scripture. To see him grow in that and to be so solid and just constantly seeking to be matured through the spirit is amazing. I, I, I feel like if this is the job we've done, not that a parent's job is ever over, but if this is the job that we've done, I'm thankful because I'm so proud of him. And it's the person he is, the character he has, and just his willingness to be used by the Lord for whatever it is. And so if that was our, our goal as parents, we want our children to know the Lord so they can walk in his ways, for him, so far, I think we've done an okay job. <laughs> I think we've got it and he's doing great. I'm so proud of him. He is got a very humble spirit. He's ready to learn, ready to be used. And I, I think, you know, all of the the ingredients there for the making of a, of a great man, um, they're all there and he's, he's doing fantastic. And so that leads us to the what now? Well, what now is we've got our graduation this weekend, which I'm so excited for. It's just gonna be a small gathering here at home with family and close friends. Um, and we will officially graduate our firstborn child, which is just so exciting and cool. Like I think back to that little tiny boy and us starting and everything we were doing and juggling it all and trying to figure it out. And, and now he'll be done. He is continuing to write his book. He is writing a novel series that is quite honestly phenomenal. It is not even my like genre of interest and it's so good. His work he's putting into the depth of these characters, the who they are, um, how the Lord is working in their lives and you know, just all of this, it just, it's really cool. Um, he loves history, loves history. Like I cannot even tell you enough, this kid is a walking history encyclopedia. Um, I'm talking to him about teaching some HMH co-op classes. So work in progress, we're not totally there yet, but I'm like, buddy, you teach us every day. I mean, he teaches the sisters all the time. I mean, he, he talks with anyone um, and he's so good at it. He's so knowledgeable. And so looking at the possibility of him stepping into more of a teaching role is something we are currently exploring. Um, he is trying to finish up his books and get them published. Um, he already has an introduction that's published. that's available on Amazon Kindle right now, but he's so close to finishing up his first book that will be published um, in paper book and on Kindle. And so very excited to get that done. Um, he's also talking with his dad, a part of the podcast was talking about ways that um, Bible teachings can go out to his generation in a way that is um, easily consumable but leaves the individual really hitting the spirit and ready to learn more and so I think between teaching in the co-op and maybe some sort of class in the co-op um, he's already looking his dad is gonna start some Bible classes in the new school year with the HMH co-op and so Travis kind of coming on is like a teacher's assistant in that um, we're kind of talking about all of that and ways that he can serve and really put his, his skill set to use. Um, so between writing books, some teaching stuff with Bible and history, and then something for him that he's really passionate about is racing. And so we've kind of talked about it. It's kind of funny to see it go full circle. We live in North Carolina because we left California to move out here to NASCAR headquarters to get involved in racing. And my husband and I both worked in it for years. Um, and so to see our son now wanting to be involved, um, he's really passionate and would love to be racing if he could, but that's expensive. And I'm like, well, you gotta figure out how many classes you gotta teach to be able to afford to go race. So <laughs> he's gotta work on that. But something that he really loves is like iRacing. And so um, that's the virtual racing and getting on and doing stuff. So he's not 
not really sure how exactly he wants to pursue that, but getting into racing in some degree, you know, we, we do still live close to NASCAR headquarters. Um, he's looked at different opportunities, different school, different things. So not sure how all, all of that's going to mesh together. But I think for him, you know, what we said is start throwing your lines out, right? Teach some classes, do this, keep writing your book, check out iRacing, you know, kind of throw out some lines, take it all to prayer and the Lord's going to make flourish where he wants you to be, right? So we put that out there, we step out in faith, we take it all to prayer and we see what happens. You don't know if you don't try. And so seeing him just to this time and to this period that he's throwing lines out there and stepping out and kind of figuring out his place in the world and how the Lord's going to use him is just a really, really cool time. And so that's kind of what's next for him. And we would appreciate y'all's prayers in this. I'm hoping that you guys will get to see him with the HMH co-op in a teaching role because I think he has a lot to offer. And he's just, I think, I think he's a born teacher. I mean, he's just really, really good when it comes to that. Um, and just his, his ability to talk and to reason. It is kind of cool getting to see the ways that his dad and I have gone about teaching him over the past, you know, decade plus. And to see how that comes out in him is, um, is really cool. It's really special to, it was nerve wracking kind of going into it when you don't know, gosh, am I screwing up my kid? Is he gonna be okay? What if he's not a functioning adult? Like, I don't know. So it is really cool getting to be on this other side of it now and be like, hey, He's phenomenal. He's fantastic. He, he's doing so well. I guess we didn't screw him up, right? We didn't ruin it. He's doing okay. Um, it's encouraging for me looking at our three younger girls that are, you know, the youngest is starting school this upcoming year. So um, it's nice to be like, okay, cool. We, we can do this. We've got this. Every child's different, but at least we know we've, we, we made it through with one, right? So our odds are, are there. We can do it. Um, so that's, that's Travis, that's, that's high school and, and graduation and kind of being on that other end. So for those of you that are like we were and you're, you're newer in the journey and you're just starting homeschooling or maybe you're in the trenches of high school and you're like, oh my gosh, am I doing this okay? You can do it, I promise you, you can do it. And that's what we hope to be here in this, this little space on YouTube where we are providing resources for families and we're encouraging families to take their children's um, just education and upbringing and discipleship seriously because when we do and when we put our effort on the root, the heart, right? Our children's walk with the Lord as the foundation and then the education and other things are just the, the kind of stones built upon that. But when we take that seriously, and we focus on discipling our children and teaching them the truth and how to, to literally deal with the world from the only area that matters and everything through that lens of scripture. And you see the young adults that they grow up to be, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. And so if we can be an encouragement for you all, that's what we really hope to be able to be here. This is how our, our baby boy, who is now much taller than I am even, this, this is how well he's doing. I'm so proud of him and just praying alongside of him for his future and whatever it is that the Lord might put in his path. So one, one done, we made it through one. Of course, we'll share more throughout. We got a lot to do this week. I shared a little snippet lot yesterday with you guys. We got baby chicks, we got graduation, we got projects going on, we got flowers being planted for the farm and trying to get to farmer's market and all of the things. So we got a busy week to share with you all today, but <sighs> got a nice cold cup of delicious Javi coffee. I am ready to go get through this week, get to graduation and celebrate with our closest friends and family. So that's our big, our big one for this week with Travis here. If you guys want a little something else to watch, I think you're gonna like this video right here. Otherwise, be sure when you subscribe, you turn on those little bell notifications so that you can see all the stuff that's going on this week. I'm gonna go get to work so we can get ready for graduation on Saturday, and I will see you all right back here tomorrow. Bye, friends.